every second of every single day you are using iron for all manner of metabolic activities. It's continually being used and used and used. So it's crucial um, to stay consistent with your iron dosing, with your supplementation, to get your ferritin levels up into an optimal range and keep them in an optimal range. Uh, you know, men require at least 10 milligrams of iron daily, um, and women at least 18 milligrams of iron daily. Now we can get that from our diet, no doubt about it. Um, and, uh, but this doesn't take into account your physical activity routine, uh, your sweating, your, your stress levels, uh, you know, your sleeping habits, breathing habits, all this kind of stuff, potential ways that we would use more and more iron um, or, you know, ways that would, in things that would increase iron requirements for us. Um, nor uh, does the recommended daily allowance for iron uh, take into account your current iron levels or your current ferritin stores. So if you're iron or ferritin deficient, um, plus you're losing extra iron, you know, each day from your physical activity routine, your exercise routine, then um, your running routine, then your requirements will be considerably higher than your same self, uh, you know, sitting on the couch every day and um, just, you know, eating steaks all day long. So if you want to enjoy optimal iron living or on op optimal iron levels, then uh, you know, it's crucial that we can consistently be putting iron into our bodies. You know, our bodies, they're crazy amazing. During times of uh, decreased iron demand or increased iron loss, uh, the body will increase its capacity to absorb iron. So for example, when a woman is menstruating uh, for that you know, three to five days, of bleeding each each month, her body will actually naturally increase its capacity to uptake iron and essentially its desire for iron. Um, and this this can increase up to two to three times what what is the the, the baseline or the normal level, uh, which is just amazing to think about. Um, the body knows to do that, um, and this is partially why you know literally not every single menstruating woman on the planet isn't you know chronically anemic. Um, because the body has this compensatory mechanism to ensure um, that uh, even though, yeah, the woman is going to lose blood each month um, via the menstrual cycle, which is normal, they can, it, they're gonna maintain as well um, because of the heightened uh, iron uptake um, or, or capacity to absorb iron. However, um, as you may have noticed, um, or you may be experiencing many, many women who menstruate regularly um, are iron deficient and um, even with that increased uptake are not getting sufficient iron levels um, and are not able to compensate for the iron lost from their period uh, you know, each month and then of course if they're more active they're runners that kind of thing you know even more so been pregnant even more more potential iron uh, losses um, so having this knowledge uh, you know if you're anemic or you're iron deficient take extra iron during your period this is a way to jumpstart your pathway, your story, your, your journey to iron optimization. Because your body, you know, like I said, it's more sensitive. It has this heightened capacity, this, this space of time where it will absorb more iron than at any other time during the month. Um, you know, this means you literally have this potential to get more from say the iron supplement you're taking or, or the steak or the, or the burger you're eating than you would you know, 10 days later, 15 days later, or, you know, even the day before you would have your period. So keep that in mind and, uh, you know, take every opportunity because you know, if you're iron deficient, it's definitely, you know, it's a challenging thing to get your iron levels up for the most part, right? Uh, this is also uh, really important during the second and third trimesters of pregnancy. Uh, I mean, there's not a, t I've talked to other videos, there's not a time we don't want your iron levels optimal before, during, or after pregnancy. You know, the whole process development wise for the baby, um, the ease for the mother, uh, it's all better if your iron levels are optimal by far. However, um, during the third trimester, this is especially important because during the third trimester, that little baby, that little nugget inside of you, inside of you is undergoing crazy surges of growth. I mean, they, they're grow growing so rapidly um, and increasing in uh, size and volume. So during the third trimester, um, when that little, you know, nugget is, is in your womb, you know, they're literally like raking, just taking all the iron they can get to make sure, um, you know, when they get outside of you, 
uh, not only can they grow inside, but when they get outside of you, that they're, they're going to be able to, to last. Um, and, you know, this makes it super crucial that you watch your, you know, get your ferritin levels checked um, during this time frame and ensure that you are staying within that, you know, 50 to 70 nanograms per milliliter range, um, that optimal range, so that uh, not only will your baby grow optimally and, you know, their their expectancy for vitality outside of the womb will be much, much better, but uh, it will help you make sure that your whole pregnancy process, the finishing of your pregnancy is uh, marked by health and vitality and vigor and your recovery is, you know, ultra efficient. If you've ever been pregnant, which I have not, I'm a male, um, or through the birthing process and been in an iron deficient state, and then through the birthing process and been in a iron proficient or sufficient state, you can attest to the drastic difference in recovery and in healing, um, just general life enjoyment that was present when you had sufficient iron versus insufficient or or, uh, iron deficiency um, towards the end of your pregnancy. So I'm Dr. Matt and uh, let's accumulate health via iron optimization.